Hi guys, so I wanted to finish our mystery book, The White House Whiteout, and I was just it today to grab my copy, so I'm going to read aloud the last chapter. As you can see, we are near the end of our mystery. So just to get everybody back on track, remember we were with our three characters, Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose, and they were visiting the White House as you can see, and they met the president's stepdaughter, Casey, and her friend, Marshall. And we find out that the dog is missing. Then they find the dog. And it kind of spirals into this huge situation that the kids find themselves in. They're trapped out in the snow. And where we left off was the kids were found by the two people on the snowmobile. They thought it was the villains, but it actually ended up being Lauren and Tinker, who lived nearby, and so they ended up taking them back to their parents' house. They got warm clothes, they got fed, all of that good stuff, and they ended up explaining to them what had happened, the situation that they had found themselves in, how they were kidnapped, and how they believed that the plan was to kidnap the dog and put it up for ransom. But then because they ended up kidnapping Casey, the stepdaughter of the president, they thought that they could get more money for whoever would pay to get her back. So Tinker and Lauren end up kind of giving more information about the villain who took them. And then they, the kids are able to call their parents so that they could get picked up. And Casey says her dad's asking if there's a place to land the helicopter and this and that. And then uh, Tinker and Lauren and the mom kind of figure out like, what's going on? What do you mean? And then everyone gets all excited about the whole situation. It's the president's stepdaughter. And they kind of tell the story to them about what happened. So we're going to finish off this book finally. So chapter nine. So the kids are all around the table having some food and the mom, Molly, says, how do soup and sandwiches sound? Molly asked, heading toward the kitchen. A blueberry pie? Can I come and live with you guys? Josh asked. They ate in the kitchen. This table looks like a pack of wolves had a picnic here, Molly Makepeace said. The seven kids had devoured all the soup, a plate full of sandwiches, and a whole pie. Natasha, remember that's the dog, landed the table waiting for something to fall her way. We saw wolves at the National Zoo, Dink said. The puppies looked just like dog puppies. We don't have any wolves here in Virginia anymore, Lauren said. Really? I was sure I heard wolves when you were stuck in that van, Josh said. You probably heard coyotes, Tinker said. My dad told me he sees other coyotes here all the time. Where is your dad, Dink asked. Do you remember the four stockings hanging above the fireplace? In the army, Lauren said, but he'll come at home in time for Christmas. Yikes, what time is it, Tinker said. He jumped up. Come on, Lauren, let's turn on our snowmobile, snowmobile lights. The president is coming. Everyone put on hats, coats, and boots. Molly found a leash for Natasha. We don't want her running off again, she said. While Tinker and Lauren started their snowmobiles, Molly found a few flashlights. Then she led the five kids out to a large flat area behind the house. In the summer, this is a pick-your-own strawberry field, she said. The kids run the business and save the profits for college. Tinker and Lauren came roaring around the corner on their snowmobiles. They made a giant circle in the snow, then pulled up and parked next to the mother and the five kids. Let's spread out around the circle, Dink said. He stilled the flashlight he'd taken from the van. Molly handed out the other flashlights, and they each took a position. Eight faces were turned toward the sky. The snowmobile lights threw their shadows into the circle. Suddenly, Natasha let out a bark. She pointed her muzzle up and began to whimper. A moment later, they all heard what Natasha had heard. It's the helicopter, Dink said. Turn on the lights. A dark object flew in front of the moon. Tiny lights blinked on and off as the object flew lower in the sky. They see us, Josh cried. Everyone began waving their flashlights as the chopper came close. 
Dink's hat almost blew off his head from the wind made by the blades. Natasha began to howl. She tugged on her leash as a helicopter landed in the middle of the vessel. She knows who it is, Casey said. They all stared at the black helicopter. Then a side door opened and the President of the United States stepped out. Oh my gosh, Tinker said. It really is him. Casey and Natasha ran towards the President. After all the hugging was over, Casey led her stepfather over to introduce him to her new friends. Everyone shook hands with President Zachary Thornton. He looked at Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose. I understand you stayed with Casey and Marshall through the entire ordeal, he said. Thank you very much. I owe you. Dink flushed down to his toes. Natasha was the real hero, he said. She went to get help and led Tinker and Lauren right to us. Did you fly that yourself? Sir, Tinker asked the president. No, I brought my pilot, the president said. Jeff and I have been looking since we found the note. What note, Casey said. Your mom found it under one of the Christmas wreaths, the president told her. It was a ransom note for Natasha. A little while later, we realized you and Marshall were gone too. Would you and your pilot like to come inside, Molly asked. The kids ate every scrap of food, but I can make coffee. That would be wonderful, the president said. Twenty minutes later, everyone was crowded into the living room. The five kids were telling everyone that they burned the spare tire on the bonfire when there was a knock at the door. More company, Molly said. It was way after midnight. I think I know who it is, the president said. I sent a couple of FBI boys to collect the bad guys. Molly opened the door. Two big men in dark uniforms stood on the porch. Between them were Joe Payne and Ace Boyd. The pair was handcuffed together. The president looked at Casey. Are these the people who took you? He asked. She is, Casey said. I never got a good look at him, though. I did, Dink said. He pulled the cigarette from his pocket. I was hiding ten feet away and I saw his face. He was smoking this. Thank you, the president said. He took the cigarette butt and slipped it into a pocket. Agent Dirks and Link, take these two back to the city and lock them up. Have FBI Director Smiley call me tomorrow. Yes, sir, the FBI agent said as the prisoners left. So you can see they've finally been caught. We have to leave too, the president said. Molly, Tinker, and Lauren, thank you for what you did. If there's anything I can ever do, please call me. The White House, Tinker asked, like, just call you? The president smiled. Yes, Tinker, he said, like, just call me. The kids all hugged Molly and Tinker and Lauren. Then Jeff the pilot helped the five kids and Natasha climb into the helicopter. When everyone was strapped in, he took the chopper up out of the make pieces strawberry field. Fifteen minutes later, Dink poked Josh and Ruth Rose. Look, he said. He pointed down. They were flying over the White House. Surrounded by snow and with all the lights on, the White House looked magical. Jeff landed the helicopter on the president's special landing pad. Everyone thanked Jeff, then they all followed the president to his private residence. But that would be pretty cool, flying over such an important building. Dink was surprised to see his father sitting on the sofa in the president's living room. Dad, he said, how did you get here? President Thornton was kind enough to send a car for me, Dink's father said. Lois and Mr. and Mrs. Lee and I had a nice chat about how our kids managed to get trouble. Dad, it wasn't our fault, Dink said. That crazy lady drove us away while we were trying to rescue Natasha. His father smiled. I know, son, he said. Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose were all introduced to Casey's mom and Marshall's parents. When everyone had found seats, Casey's mom said, What I don't understand is how this Joe Payne knew that Natasha was the president's dog. Mom, Natasha's sweater says first dog. So you can see where the family have been reunited. You should know. You knitted it for her, Casey said. Everyone had a good laugh. So I guess Joe Payne figured she could steal the dog and get ransom money, Dinks said. And the rest of us were just along for the ride, Josh said, rubbing his sore arm. Casey yawned. The first stepdaughter, 
first stepdaughter is tired, she said. The president stood up. I think we all need to get to bed, he said. I can't wait to go back to that hotel, Josh said. Actually, you and Dink and Marshall will be sharing Lincoln's bedroom tonight, the president said. He will wait with Dink's father. We're sleeping here tonight, Josh yelped. In the White House? Yes, everyone is having a sleepover, Casey's mom said. Ruth Rose, you can share Casey's room. I brought our luggage, Dink's father told Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose. Your pajamas and things are already in your room. Mrs. Lee and I will head home, Marshall's mother said. I have to be up to early for work. She kissed Marshall. Get some sleep and no staying up all night talking. All the kids shared a high five. Later, just as Dink was falling asleep, Josh poked him. What? Dink asked. I heard something funny, Josh said. Josh, it's almost two in the morning, Dink said. I don't want to hear any of your lovely jokes. I heard something weird, Josh insisted. A voice out in the hall. Marshall was sleeping on the sofa. What's going on? He asked, sitting up. Josh is hearing things, Dink said. I'm not hearing things, Josh said. Someone is out there. Then I know who it is, Marshall whispered. It's Casey pulling her Lincoln's ghost joke again. I'll bet Ruth Rose put her up to it, Josh said. Marshall slipped off the sofa and wrapped his sheet around himself. Get your sh sheets and follow me, he whispered to Dink and Josh. Marshall led the two boys to a small door behind the sofa. Where does this go, Dink asked. You'll see. They entered a bathroom. Marshall pointed to a, call to a tall cupboard near the bathtub. It leads to a secret passageway. He opened the cupboard, revealing a hallway. At the end was another door. That goes to the main hall, he whispered. Don't let the girl see us. Marshall opened the door as quietly as he could. He stuck his head out, then motioned to Dink and Josh. The boy saw two figures covered in sheets. They were crouched outside the door to the Lincoln bedroom. Dink saw Ruth Rose's red sneakers sticking out from underneath one of the sheets. Let's get him, Marshall whispered. Cover up. The three boys draped the sheets over their heads, leaving room to see where they were walking. They crept up behind the girls, waving their arms like flying ghosts. Good evening, Josh said in his deepest, spookiest voice. The two crouching figures jumped up. Ruth Rose screamed. Casey shoved open the door to the Lincoln bedroom and they both ran in. Dink, Josh, and Marshall went right in behind them, still waving their arms in the air and making ghost noises. I know it's you, Marshall Lee, Casey said, whipping off her sheet. And I recognized your voice, Joshua, Ruth Rose said. She yanked off her sheet. Gotcha, Josh said. They all started to laugh. Dink heard knocking behind him and turned around. A tall man wearing a black suit stood in the doorway. He had a black beard and a tall black hat on his head. The five kids froze as if turned to ice. Dink gulped. He could hardly swallow. He was staring at the ghost of Abraham Lincoln. I hope you enjoy sleeping in my room, the figure of Abe Lincoln said. Don't forget to make the bed tomorrow. Good night. The man closed the door and walked away. As the man walked down the hall, he heard screaming from the room behind him. Smiling, he pulled off the fake beard and top hat. Boy, do I love doing that, President Zachary Thornton said to himself. Seems like the president likes to make jokes too. And that's the end of our book. So hopefully you were able to kind of collect the clues as we went along in the book. I know we did a lot in school with thinking about the characters and the places the characters went, thinking about the setting and how the author included specific details for each of the parts. So tomorrow we're going to start reading The Tale of Despero. And if you were able to pick up your materials from school today, you should have a copy in your bag. If you don't, please let me know and I can send you some scanned copies of the pages that we're going to read. So we're going to start reading Tale of Despero tomorrow. I think you'll really like it. 
It's written by the same author that wrote Because of Win Dixie, which we read earlier this year. So we're going to continue with that book tomorrow and we'll do some activities and work along the way. See you later.